to what I think is a special edition of BeerAmerica.tv. What uh, do I think? I don't know. I'm hoping you'll think it's good because I am bringing to the table, we have talked about in the past, oh, this isn't my top five or this is my top, you know, whatever. Number one. Oh. I have brought to the table my number one favorite beer. Right now, I mean, it has been for a few years, my number one favorite beer. Dogfish Heads Red and White. All right. Um, and I have a quick story about Dogfish Heads Red and White. If you go on to the On the Road section, which is right up here, and you see the video that we did about Dogfish Head, the video that I did for the, the, the PBS show that I had. Okay. And while I was saying to Sam, I said, you know, we're going to come up, we're going to shoot this segment. I need you to brew something that, ha very visual, you know, whatever. He said, well, I've got this new beer that we've been thinking about. And uh, it's got coriander and orange peel, and we've never brewed it before. And they brew things at the brew pub first to see how it goes over before it goes to the brewery. If it doesn't go over well, if it flops, then it stays at the brew pub and doesn't go to the main brewery. Gotcha. That beer just so happened to be the very, very first batch ever of red and white. Ooh. So he sent me a bottle of it when it was finally done, and I was blown away by it. I mean, it's just... It was so smooth and so wonderful, and one of those beers, and I'm not a wine drinker, but if I was, this is like right up the alley. I mean, it's a very wine-like beer. Thirsty. Well, let's open it up and pour it. And, and, and I say that because it's actually, it's brewed with coriander and old orange peel, and, uh, and it's aged in Pinot Noir barrels. So, I mean, there's a bit of that in there. And I just, uh, and it's a seasonal too. That's important to note here that it, it's a seasonal. And the reason why we're doing it now is because tis the season for this beer, which is I think February, March. And you can go to his site to find out when these beers are available. But it's really. Well, it has the Pinot Noir juice in it as well. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I think he's added that since the very, very first batch. But you can see the color right off the bat. Yeah, beautiful color. Especially considering that the base of this beer is wit beer or, mm -hmm. or beer blanche. And I've read certain descriptions of this beer and for wow. a lot of people who've tried it, they have a hard time describing it. Because I, even though on, on the website he says it's a Belgian style beer, I don't know, I'm interested to see what you think because you have not had this beer before. It's got a the wacky aroma right mm -hmm. off the gate. Right, right it's the, kind of that indescribable Avery type thing that we talked about, where you know there's no category to define it. Whoa, wow, yeah, it's um, that is a little bit hard to pinpoint. Definitely got a big alcohol character. Um, I love this beer. It's not quite vinous, but it's mm -hmm. um, wow. This is going to be a challenge to come up with a vernacular to describe it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really one of those type beers where it's, it goes to, to that category of not being in a category. So you, I, I, I don't know, I mean, it's just like, oh, I've never had a beer that's quite tasted like this before. And that goes back, as I've said before, the dogfish head thing, where they brew, seem to brew beers that are just a little bit different, or sometimes a lot of bit different than a lot of other beers. They're very, they're into the extreme brewing. I wouldn't Slightly call this extreme. I mean, yeah, off-centered ales for off-centered people is their motto. And uh, but I just find this a super cool beer, and I don't know why. I mean, it's great with food. I've had it with food. Um, yeah, it's uh, despite its, uh, you know, alcoholic intensity, mm -hmm. it, it definitely has a kind of a uh, a nice note that kind of, I, I can see how this would accent uh, quite a few foods. Mm -hmm. um, I keep thinking though that with that whole Pinot Noir thing, I think I keep I keep looking for that um, acidity. Yeah. Um, but I'm not necessarily getting that. So it's a little bit of a departure from some of the Belgian styles that, we're, that we've been talking about. Um, I have bottles from the past. This is actually the 2009 version that I picked up last week. So I know that it's gotta be fresh. And I think this beer has also evolved. I don't know if anybody out there has kept bottles from the past. I have a 2008 edition, which tastes a lot like the 2009 edition, but the very first time I had this, it wasn't nearly as intense as this. So I think he's sort of evolved, and I know that he didn't age it in Pinot Noir barrels as well back then. So, because he started out at the pub. Mike Gerhardt, who is his uh, brew pub uh, brewer, um, you know, was putting it together and outstanding. So check out the video on the website uh, that we did on Dogfish Head, and you'll see the very first batch. That's the very first batch of red and white. And you can see Sam down there with a 
put everything in you know these nylon bags and they're steeping you know was it steeping is that what they call it with the uh, with the getting it all into their the uh, fruit or the, the everything they put the uh, coriander and the orange peels and everything in these bags and they just were almost by hand in the kettle the, in the kettle yeah oh in the kettle, okay getting all the flavors and everything else and that video is all right there of them doing the first batch of it yeah one of the things I would say about this is that uh, a lot of the spice character mm -hmm. and even the the pinot character is the, the expression I often use is well integrated. Mm -hmm. It's not, nothing's coming out and whacking you right on the head. Right. Um, so um, I, I think that adds some subtlety to what is a fairly complex beer, if that makes any sense at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, when you've got a lot of different characters going on, you got things that are just coming up and smacking you right on the head. Right. Sometimes it seems a little bit, uh, well, heavy handed is a good way to say it. Uh, but this, this is pretty well put together. Yeah, I mean, um, and I and I think that uh, some time in, in the bottle would probably be uh, an attribute. And that's I mean, why it's, I'm saving it. It's still for that a bit, very reason. a bit warm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if I had any criticism to it at all, it would be this. Uh, I mean, you can taste that alcohol. It's yeah. Uh, there's you no, think does that mellow out in time? Um, it can. Mm -hmm. um, it can uh, more so in in barrels than it than it will in the bottle. But it, it will definitely mellow in the bottle. Ten percent. Ten percent. Yeah. That's a really interesting beer. Yeah, it really is. And and uh, I know this is like, I think the, gosh, I think the third Dogfish Head beer that we did, and there's so many good ones to try, but I really wanted to do this one now because it's in season. So check it out, see if you can get it. And I know the Dogfish Head's becoming more available as they continue to grow. Oh yeah. Like a lot of these breweries uh, around the country. So I would definitely try the red and white. They've got the black and blue. Best thing for you to do with any of the beers that we try is to go to the websites because that's where they get some nice detailed explanation. Oh, yeah, you know, only in February, only in March, year round, whatever. Uh, now, was it wasn't there some another something in blue or red and there's black and blue. Oh, black and blue. Black and blue. Yeah, that was and, an, another one of theirs. It was brewed for the first time around the same time as the was it black and, and blue or blue and white? Black and blue. Black and, and blue. Oh, it was what blackberries and yeah, I blueberries. Yeah, blueberries and so it's got a guy on it with a black eye and I don't know. I, I've had it before. <laughs> it's excellent. Actually, it's really good and I, I can't be specific about what's in it, but it's it's one of those and other beers. We'll get to it. There's so many good ones to get to, but uh, so many beers, so little, so little time. time. Yeah, but you know what? The beauty of it all is that uh, we've got the time. So let's try to try Indeed. them all, and uh, it's kind of our quest, I think, what to try try them all. Um, I don't know if that was the mission to start with, but uh, I'm, I'm up for the challenge. It's fun, right? It's fun to think about, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so that's it right now for this edition. Um, Dogfish Heads Red and White. And this is number one on my list. Now, it could change down the road, but for the last couple of years, this is my number one. Are you just going to cheers with the bottle and just... I'm, <laughs> I might, because I, you know, the thing is, i got this big bottle and, and all of this beer left, and I'm, I'm, none of this is going to waste, trust me. Uh, so Paul at BeerAmerica.tv, if you have any questions or comments, Pink at BeerAmerica.tv. Any questions or comments, and uh, you can find us uh, podcasting on iTunes, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. We're there. We're there for you. So, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>